boy our favorite gotcha drama genshin impact catastrophic catastrophic sorry 2024 boycott i know that we watched the other video where people were mad about basically whitewashing all the characters that's been carried on from you know not just natland from sumeru and people are very upset saying you know our culture needs to be represented stop selling only light-skinned waifus there's a whole you know uh, uh boycott about that but i think there's a follow-up video there's like a follow-up update from mujin let's see what he has to say Another day, another Genshin Impact boycott. This Let's go. time with over a hundred thousand signatures. On that is actually pretty impressive. That the quote unquote vocal minority, because I still think that this is a minority representative of the actual player base that spends and plays in Genshin Impact. I don't think that this is gonna do shit. At the end of the day, as long as Hoyo versus bottom line is not impacted, like, it doesn't really matter. After the last time they did a, boy a boycott like this, the banner sales were perfectly fine. So, we'll see. On a change.org petition with the name, Stop Cultural Appropriation and Whitewashing in MiHoYo Games. And remember, don't forget to call your local, po like, uh, political uh, representatives to get them to call, contact Mr. MiHoYo himself and say, you guys are racist, you need to include dark skin waifus in this game. MiHoYo, otherwise known as Hoyaverse, who yep. is Genshin Impact's developer. This isn't the first time that Genshin Impact is accused by its community, mostly Sumeru. on Twitter and Reddit, of being racist. Sumeru. But this is the first time where you have significant people within yeah. the community talk about it. I'm there, 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 that is a lot of people. The amount of video, I mean, people are simply talking about it because obviously controversy and drama like this is obviously going to drive traffic. Like, I guarantee you, like me as well, Mujin, like we all know what we're doing. We're covering drama because it gets the clicks and it gets the money. Obviously, it's spicy content and I think that it's honestly like peak entertainment. But like, people are simply talking about it, not because they necessarily care too much about this content, but because drama just like is always just such hot commodity. Talking voice actors who voiced for the game Yep. directly talking about it and content creators who never really involved themselves in controversy and who've never spoken about something like this talk about it now oh the boy people protesting this were done with the game voicing their discontent and saying that they were gonna well they're not done with the game right because like if you truly wanted to make it like an impact you would simply <laughs> impact on genshin impact you would simply just uninstall and stop playing but like people are saying, no, nah, just be free to play. Don't spend anything. But like you still participating in the ecosystem as a free to play player still serves to make those, you know, whales satisfied. Like just because you're free to play doesn't mean you're like doing anything. You're still fucking helping the game. Gonna boycott it. But little did they know that this entire controversy, this entire boycott was going to be catastrophic. Whoa. But not in the way you'd think. Let's talk about it. But you know how you can avoid catastrophe? Sure. Raid Shadow Legends used your discount code Mujin to get your first battleship wife. We went back to the main content. Genshin Impact has been out for almost four years now. And in wow. that time, it has found itself embroiled in racism controversies three times now, including three? this one going on right now. Three? I know Sumeru, Natlan, and maybe in the beginning when Shin Yan came out and people were kind of mad about that shit too right that was like pretty early on genshin days now and the question is why well you see genshin impact has many regions mm. with liyue right here being inspired by china i mean remember the key word here is inspired not based off of a lot of people mistake this verbiage and think that because you're inspired by this region or continent that everything here has to now fit that model therefore a lot of people are upset that different continents are supposed to represent darker skinned people are not getting their representation because genshin impact sees the data and they see dark skinned waifus don't sell as hard as light skinned waifus now why is that the case i think that Dea, xin yan a lot of these characters skill kits sucked on release so obviously not people are going to buy it now is there a correlation between um, apparent beauty with dark skin tones and amount of people that's going to buy it compared to light skin i don't know there has to be a statistic done on it but i think koyoverse is literally making just a data-driven decision based on the statistics they have an actual opera singer called yunjin that sings in mandarin I hope a tech tone clip will show up. This Yunjin opera. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. I hope Mujin shows the tech tone clip here. Chinese opera. She was made to promote and celebrate yes. Chinese culture. So it's no secret Liyue is based on China. Then you have Inazuma based on Japan. No tech tone? No, that was such a perfect opportunity to put the baldy in there. 
where the enemies look like samurais and yeah. the goddess of the region or archon is called the Raiden Shogun, Shogun right? It's very straightforward. Shogun. The first racism controversy that Hoyaverse was embroiled in was shortly after the game's release in 20... <laughs> Find out everything about Hill of Charles, indigenous people references why... <laughs> Because indigenous tribe influences are within the hillitural design, so you're shitting on the aboriginal people because <laughs> oh, no, no, not like this. 2020, one of the first and most common enemies you fight in the game for a very <laughs> long time are called hillitrals, and this is how they look, right? Yeah. The controversy stemmed from how their skin is the blackest it can be, and they are seen as the enemy. What oh, made no. this controversy somewhat significant, though, was when an office tour of the developer of Genshin yeah. Impact was published on YouTube, uh -oh. and people saw an employee taking inspiration for the dance the hillitrill does from tribal and indigenous people. Oh, no. The happy dance that they do when you, you know, guess the correct option during the daily quest. It was racist all along! This is the dance right here, right? So overall, this happened. However, no! at the time, the game had generated over a billion dollars just in six months, and the community was so huge that these complaints, honestly, they pretty much got ignored. No one. I, I didn't even know this shit happened. I remember the drama honestly started to begin during the, the Staff of Homa incident with a lot of people. This is before Genshin actually had a weapon pity. Did y'all know that? A lot of new people playing Genshin probably don't know this, but fucking Tecto literally made a video where he like dropped like $2,000 and didn't get a single staff of Homa. I think the, um, there was no 50-50, right? It's just like, it's random every time and he kept getting the fucking, the greatsword for fucking, uh, Diruk at, during that time. I remember I watched that stream live. I was at work and I was like watching that stream live and watching this bald man waste like $2,000 trying to get this one fucking weapon, just dying, just laughing. I'm like, oh my fucking God. And then the whole drama happened and then Hoiverse implements the 50-50 system in there. But other than that and Yunjin stuff, I didn't remember the Hiltra stuff. One really took them seriously. Now, at this point, Genshin had been out for over a year. The Inazuma arc was concluding. Yeah. And people were looking forward to the next region that came afterwards, which was Sumeru. Sumeru. Yeah. There was such a content drought that leakers were becoming more and more of a problem because people looked forward to new content so much. I would argue one of the biggest leaks in this game's history mm -hmm. was this image right here. Damn, they just... I don't know how far off from Sumeru it was going to be, but immediately just dropped the whole roster, huh? This was posted on Reddit and then Twitter. And as you can see, this has over 20,000 upvotes on the subreddit r slash Genshin Impact Leaks. Okay. This image was so extremely significant. You had seven characters yeah. that no one had ever seen before. The only... Oh, and the only... Can you guys tell? Can you guys tell? Among this roster of characters, for a continent that's inspired by places with a lot of desert areas, can you tell why people would get mad? Hmm. Let's see. The only thing that was shown from Sumeru was nothing, right? This was posted on June 30th, 2022. A few days later, on July 2nd, would be the first time people would even see what the region looked like. And there you had every single character releasing yeah. for like the next months that's crazy. after Sumeru finally releases. The leaks were getting out of control, but that's not what people were concerned with on Twitter Skin or Reddit. Tone. Sumeru was meant to be a region inspired by the Middle East and South Asia. So yes. India, for example. This made Twitter and some Reddit communities lose their absolute minds. Genshin Impact fans protest new Sumeru's character skin color. And remember, the keyword is inspired by those regions. So the often the talking point that a lot of people use to defend Hoyoverse for this is they're not whitewashing. It's not based off of that content that's inspired. And I think in the not the terms of service, but some sort of like fine print of what Genshin Impact's like motives or like vision was, it's like it's a work of fiction and they're not trying to actually have like a one-to-one -one representation of different, you know, cultures and stuff like that. Obviously, they'll take regions, but that's kind of like the logic that they use. Calling Hoyaverse racist for not wanting to display the skin colors of the cultures that they were getting inspired from. Yep. And the hashtag 
Boycott Genshin got created. Oh boy. What I found really funny at the time was that <laughs> these were leaked characters. These were illegally obtained images of the characters. Yet people were messaging Genshin Impact's customer support. Hey! I committed this crime and I'm calling the police, but I didn't commit the crime. You know? He's like reporting someone else's crime, but in order to do that, you have to commit the crime yourself. Like a situation where it's like, shit, I'm admitting that I saw the leaks, but I can't do that. But, you know. Complaining on Twitter, complaining on Reddit, calling them racist, when the entire foundation of their argument is an image obtained illegally. Like The best part of these messages from people like this that tweets that shit is like, the way that they like even write their tweets, right? This guy, give me your dollar, Lily, this person says, Exclamation mark times three. Don't let them know it's because you saw leaks though. Using all four of my emails for this. They go see me dot 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 dot. Email references here also. Emoji. Important if you're using multiple emails like a grown functioning adult doesn't talk like this. These are children, terminally online children that has nothing to do but just like rage bait online. Like that's why quite often whenever like drama like this happens, like, the tweets that you see just seem so perspective from, like, a child. It just didn't make sense. Even if content creators and- I, I do love this meme. I do love this whitewashed meme of, what, the pharaoh during the Egypt, like, era is supposed to fucking look like. Just like a white man with a fucking tan. And voice actors and, and just people in the community wanted to talk about it. They couldn't. Because that would blacklist them from any collaborations with Hoyverse in the future. There's Did you just say the word blacklist? Excuse me? What do you mean blacklist? Oh, we can't participate anymore because we got blacklisted? Well, what does whitelist mean? Seems a little racist to me. Any collaborations with Hoyverse in the future, there's- This is the mentality of like the people that would say like be mad at Genshin Impact, by the way. That was a joke. There's one thing they don't like and it's discussing leaks. But that didn't stop the community from creating a wildfire. Over time, as Genshin Impact would reveal more and more Candace. characters in Sumeru, there would always be comments and the replies talking- Yeah, not tan enough, not dark skin enough, she's way too light skin. ...about how they're not dark enough. But that didn't stop a huge amount of people from liking and spending money on those designs. Yep. And ironically, even though there was an entire boycott- Look at that shit. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters is the banner sales, right? The only thing that matters is the money, the bottom line. And what does it say? Nahida plus Yoimita rerun. This is a Sumeru banner, bro. It exceeded Raiden, Shogun, and Kokomi banner by like an extra 1 mil USD roughly. Actually, sorry, that's like 500,000. You can see that the complaints, yes, the vocal minority is there and they're very fucking loud. But the vast majority of people playing this shit don't give a fuck. They'll continue swiping and that's why nothing changes. That's why it is, I wouldn't say pointless, but anytime you try to do shit like this and you think that you have a big movement going on, you're actually a speck in this fucking, a sand in a, like a whole beach of people. Movement made on Twitter when the goddess or archon of Sumeru released, which is probably the most pale character out of any character Nahida. in Sumeru, she broke sales records. Yes, this was the highest selling character banner in the history of the game since its release in... Well, she's also fucking insane. Her kit. Like, the meme literally was... Nahida C2 is a better, like, constellation upgrade than any other characters gearing their own C1 or C2. That's how impactful it was, and that's also when, like, Dendro was absolutely the actual fucking meta. Hyper Bloom ran rampant, not to mention the other, you know, elemental reactions regarding Dendro. This is before, again, like, you know, all the main, like, the meta shit happening right now with individual DPFs like Nouvelle and, like, um, fuck, Father. But you can clearly tell that it's not just because she was a light-skinned lolly that was, you know, it's still the meta, but you can clearly tell that there is an extra level of different things. Before, Dendra was the only fucking way. It's literally, anyone can slap in that hyper Bloom character's EM stats, just fucking run rampant. Now it's shifted a little and the meta has become more hyper-carry relevant, but it's not just because she's light-skinned lolly. Her kit was just fucking also insane. And that also goes into the whole discussion of why Dea, Xin Yan, the other darker-skinned characters perform bad upon releasing their banners because their kit upon release, people were very negative about it. And it just didn't really work well compared to the other meta relevant characters back then. I heard they is much better now though. 2020, more specifically in China, which is one of their main markets, but overall it did very, very well globally too. 
This was then largely forgotten, right? We moved on to the next region, which was Fontaine. A okay. mix of French and British culture. I don't know why you'd mix both of those things. I but got no listen, clue. <laughs> it's your game, buddy. But people from the Sumeru controversy were hoping that the region after Fontaine, which was going to be Natlan, would give them what they wanted. Darker skin. <laughs> Who gonna tell them, man? Characters, because it was a region rumored to be inspired by South American oh and boy. some African culture. Oh well, boy. as you can guess from this video and the title and what we're talking about, yeah. it didn't meet any of their yeah. expectations. On July 9th, 2024, Hoyaverse did their 4.8 version live stream and then at the end revealed not only more of Natland's landscape, mm -hmm. but all these characters. I mean, to be fair, right? If we look at based on pure skin tone, obviously, Mavuika is the most lightest. You know, we got the light skin ones. One, two. I don't think she's a light skin, right? One, two, three, four. Also, Ororon is the guy that was beside El Capitan in the trailer now that I see his design. Oh, that's who it was. One, two, three, four, five. I'd say five of these are light skin. And like, you're going to say I'm crazy for thinking Kachina is not light skin. But like, Kachina is slightly darker. Slightly darker, right? Mwalani is darker. Iansan is probably the darkest. And Shilonen, it, it, it's, it's more tan, right? <laughs> this is the degree of darkness that Hoyoverse is willing to mix in to the color palette. And I bet people are very fucking mad. With Mavuika over here yeah. being the goddess or archon. Let's go! So as you can tell, there's not much of a change since Sumeru, right? So well, I would argue compared to that first Sumeru picture where it was only Dea, right? And Candace came later, but like, ah, for the initial cast, I think that Hoyoverse actually did think about how people would react if everybody was just completely pale and decided to put a little bit of tan in there. This prompted the same people who disliked Sumeru designs to come back on Twitter and Reddit and in the communities they oh frequent boy. to talk about their dislike and disappointment in the direction Hoyaverse took these characters. You saw tweets like this popping up with the hash Dark skin characters in any games. Oh, my queen, Yoruichi. Tag boycott HYV, which stands for Hoyaverse, saying, look at this bullshit. Fix your f ass games, Hoyaverse. HYV? That's kind of interesting how they have reduced Hoyaverse to this acronym, which honestly sounds kind of like HIV. I wonder if they meant to do that as like intentionally to kind of like associate the negative stigma with that. I, I don't know. I'm probably schizo here. First, showing examples of dark skin characters in any games and then comparing them to Hoyaverse's palette. <laughs> See, look at the color palette, right? It's like... This is what's considered dark skin to Hoyaverse, to HYV, but then... Oh, yo, Agil! You see that? Right beside Killer B! SAO, Agil, let's fucking go! Alex. This boycott ended up reaching people outside of the targeted demographic with this tweet right here, where someone ended up sending a message <laughs> to Genshin Impact's customer support <laughs> complaining about the character's designs and their skin tone. <laughs> Customer service, dear traveler. Thank you for the feedback. I just got an automated fucking response. Please be kindly reminded that Genshin Impact is a work of fiction. It is not related to actual people, events, groups, and organizations. And this is a very automated pure response. But this is the foundation that they started because they were aware that shit like this is going to get people mad from the beginning. Like, they strictly say it's a work of fiction and nothing is actually directly based on these different regions in real life. It's an inspiration. Saying, Genshin is not real life. Genshin Impact, what kind of response is this when a player submits feedback about the racism and colorism? I mean, but if you really think about it, it's not real life. It's a fucking video game and they have no obligation to cater towards, you know, these different representation of people that feel like they're underrepresented by playing their games. It sucks. It for sure sucks to feel like, you know, I'm part of this region. I've been waiting for, you know, Natlan or Sumeru re uh, release for so long and I can't wait to have, you know, characters that I can associate with because the skin color is a huge thing of the identity and they didn't get that. Like, I can understand why they would be mad, but at the same time, a video game company that's main goal is to just make money has no obligations to follow up embarrassing unprofessional behavior from a company of grown-ups and supposed mature well-read developers hashtag hmm. why are they white hoyo 
They were referencing what the customer service was responding with. Here's what they said. Dear Traveler, thank you for your feedback. Please be kindly reminded that Genshin Impact is a work of fiction yeah. and is not related to actual people, events, yep. groups, or organizations. We really do hope for your understanding. Kind regards, Genshin Impact customer. And for the most part, whenever shit like this happens, where it's like drama between like a, a company, a corporation versus like the people, the working class, I'm usually on the side of the fucking working class, but this is different, right? I don't like Hoyoverse. I think that they're fucking, their products are polished, but it, it's a lot of dumb shit that they do. Not a huge fan. But at the same time, I can recognize that the freaks fucking trying to make a big deal out of this are perhaps even more mentally ill. Our service team. This led to a very divided response on Twitter, with some people calling Hoivers based for this response and others saying that they were immature and this only made them hate them more. In any case, yeah. this got so much attention that the person who tweeted it ended up deleting their account, which is why Ooh. I'm showing you a screenshot. But this was still nothing compared to what happened next. What happened? Valeria Rodriguez, a voice actress, and uh -oh. someone who happens to voice Sucrose uh -oh. from Genshin Impact, a four-star character. Sucrose, gotta pour one out for Sucrose, man. She was, she's putting in fucking work, bro. Four-star fucking Kazuya. Kazuya. Tweeted this out on July 13th, Kazuha. saying, I could stay quiet about this and protect myself, but us folk of color don't always need to stay quiet and let others f*** us over and disrespect okay. us so that we continue to advance at half the pace of our white peers. Ooh, okay. Valeria Rodriguez. You can clearly tell that she's not white. 2.2 million views. The voice actor for Sucrose, who's pretty white, but her point is the white voice actors are doing better because of the prejudice of the skin tone color selection. If you're going to use real world deities, respect them. If you're basing off of real cultures, respect that. I'm fine with things being inspired by various cultures. That's awesome. Representation is dope. Yep. But bare minimum, do some research and show some cultural appreciation. And I think that the last thing that she said, she's not wrong. She is, you know, there's, there's, there's right things about this, right? But the thing is, again, it's, it's the inspiration, right? Representation is dope, sure. But do a little bit of research and show some cultural appreciation. But... Is like having just that skin tone just the end of cultural appreciation, right? I, I, I haven't played the recent patches for that long, but I, I've heard of other talking points of how it's not just the character design, but what that region has, the kind of content, the different dialogues and quests and stuff like that, that actually shows more of the culture and not just the skin tone. Then she goes on to say, Oloran is the supreme Yoruba deity. You could find that with a quick Google search even. Okay. <laughs> so... This is what I'm going to do for this one. We're going to do Fate Grand Order Saber. And this is the representation of King Arthur. You, know, you guys know who King Arthur is, right? King Arthur. Right? So... This is another series, Type Moon, Fate Grand Order, right? The Fate series where they based historical people and, and make them into waifus because it sells a lot, right? And uh, people, if you're going to say shit like this, then with the same energy, you could go with it and say, this is extremely sexist and I cannot believe what you're doing with fucking... You know, King Arthur, this is not the way it's supposed to be. Again, it's just another example that I'm showing you to kind of show how kind of ridiculous the base of this argument is regarding how, you know, deities, local legends, stuff like that. If you're going to try to, you know, base characters off of that, do your homework. It's like, it's a work of fiction. This is unforgivable. Look at what a sick job Smite did with their own interpretation. It's not hard. So here she's referencing Olorun right here. For sure. It looks sick. I'm not arguing against that, right? It's, it's a pretty good representation, like a one-to-one. -one. But they don't have to do one-to-one, -one, and they're trying to make, like, a femboy twink husbando here to sell for the sales, you know? I'm sorry, it's just all data-driven according to their audience and what they want. Do you really think that people who spend on Genshin Impact is gonna fucking swipe for a character that looks like this? The reason why Genshin Impact, like, the most masculine character there is, fucking Ito is not... Ito's barely masculine, bro. The most masculine dude with an actual fucking beard is grungy and kind of like big is the fucking Smith guy. But like, 
They don't do that. You know why? Because people don't fucking swipe. They're, they have numbers that show that the people who play her game just want femboys, attractive husbandos, and waifus. And this guy, maybe there's a way to make him into husbando. But Genshin knows what their target audience is. And they trying to sell this model of it. It's not hard. So here she's referencing Olorun right here, the Yoruba deity. On the right, you can see the design from Smite. And right here is a character called Aurorun in Genshin. That pick is not even real. It's from another game. Smite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. We're comparing, you know, the Smite representation right now, right? The fact that they did um, Olorun and Smite. In fact, part of Natland's new characters, that doesn't resemble him in the slightest, right? She then ends her chain of tweets with a picture of herself with a book called Congo, the Epic History of a People, yeah. to prove that she's not doing this performatively. <laughs> really? No. This might be the most performative picture I've seen to prove that she's serious, that she picks a fucking picture with a book that... Has she even read this? She probably has, but it's just like when you go on and tired like this and you try to like put evidence like people like it's just, it's just kind of a bad look <laughs> all right so it's obvious that this tweet or series of tweets are very angry and emotional and this was partly because it wasn't just talking about a video game anymore it was talking about racism in general mm. this was also very direct right this wasn't a subtweet or an indirect tweet this was calling out genshin specifically by including this picture of the upcoming character orun a voice actor being this direct about Genshin Impact controversy has never really quite happened before. So one could say this was really the ground zero of the massive Twitter drama that followed. For sure, when you have an actual voice actor come out, like, it's not a random voice actor either. Remember, this voice actor of Sucrose, and she can pretty much say goodbye to any contracts or any potential, you know, um, career opportunities with Hoyoverse content. I'm sure that's a risk. It's a gamble that she was willing to, you know, take, right? So she is standing on business, but, like... You're going to reap those consequences later and she might kind of like regret that to do something like that in an unprofessional way. <sighs> I don't know. I mean, it's just like in terms of like what's good for your career. But then again, some people are going to say, well, at the end of the day, it's nothing. It's not just about career. This is like a religious, not a religious. This is an important movement to protect, you know, our um, heritage and, you know, identity of a race. So <sighs> I just... This feels like this is just a fucking dumb video game at the end of the day. Valeria didn't stop there though. She tweeted again on the same day. My reaction to you dork saying you're going to switch your game to a different language now. And <laughs> I've never played this game on English. From the beginning of downloading Genshin Impact and playing on launch, I've immediately put onto Japanese voice pack. I've never played a single fucking game with English voice acting because I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. The English voice acting for you, most animes already suck. For gacha games, they're pretty fucking trash. There might be some good ones, but my god, the Japanese counterparts, the Asian counterparts, the Korean Chinese voice acting, it just suits the theme so much better, and I can feel some actual emotion put into the voices. And it shows an emoji laughing. I'm not deleting my tweets either. Seeing the huge response, both hateful and positive, means that I struck a chord. I'm done being silent. It's 2024. We can all do better. Then you had Bill Butt speak up, someone who doesn't who voice that? for Genshin Impact, but who voices for Honkai Star Rail, oh. another game in Hoya vs. Roster. He's Albert, the beloved host of Honkai oh. Star Rail live streams that show. Did we have a recent uh, update? Is he still around? I wonder if he's gonna lose his job for this. In case the next versions. Choosing not to be as direct as Valyria and saying, dark skin is beautiful. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. This was- Yeah, it's a very safe thing to say. Like he's not directly pointing. He's saying, oh, Hoyoverse trash, Genshin Impact. I can't believe you're doing this. This is a, it's a dog whistle, right? He's carefully saying something that is not controversial. He just saying dark skin is beautiful, right? Don't let anyone tell you otherwise, but obviously there's a, layered implication on that. It's also made on July 13th, the same day Valeria was tweeting, and one could regard it as a subtweet, as an indirect tweet towards what was going on in Genshin Impact. Alejandro Saab, who voices in three different Hoyverse games in major roles, quote tweeted one of Valeria's tweets and said, I didn't know that's who he's based on. Ah, that's bad. You still got time mm. to fix it. Doubling down and tweeting it again on Sayu. his YouTuber account, echoing the same- Oh, that's- Well, now my immersion of who he is is ruined. You know? I always thought that he was like a cool cyber enemy guy. But now I'm going to associate this face 
with the, the now I just that's the problem with VTubing, right? You have like an identity that you create and people associate you with that face and the real face comes out and you're like, hold up, this is not what I had in my mind. Then <laughs> I'm gonna stop watching. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Ah, that's bad. You still got time to fix it. Doubling down and tweeting it again on his VTuber account, echoing the same statement, but this time saying, wow, this is bad. So at this point, Twitter was on fire and you had something that had never happened before. Multiple voice actors were mm -hmm. in some way risking their jobs oh, by speaking out about this so directly. But this was only the beginning. This tweet right here was made saying, why aren't Genshin content creators saying anything? They're the voices of the community. They should speak. Cuz, are you stupid? Why would any fucking Genshin content creator say this? Cuz like, you're fucked if you do, fucked if you don't. Honestly, there's nothing good that comes out of it. Cuz like, sorry, if you side, if you side with Hoyoverse saying like, this is not racist, it's just a video game. All the crazy mentally ill people are gonna come after you sending death threats. And then if you side by, with the, the, the people saying that this is bad, then the content creators potentially lose their contracts. And like, they, I'm sure the people that's on a contract, like they cannot badmouth characters, right? It's, at the end of the day, it's their livelihood on the line. There is no fucking reason someone would go out and risk their livelihood for dumb drama like this. Garnering quite a bit of attention. This made very positive Genshin Impact creators, people who typically avoid oh, controversy Doro. in every way and just focus on the positives, feel pressured to speak. Doro44 is one of them, and he quote tweeted this tweet yeah. saying, why aren't Genshin content creators speaking? Doro44, if you don't know, is probably one of the most positive and outspoken persons for Genshin, right? He's... Like, if you're gonna think, he's not, is it correct to call him a Genshin Glazer? He's overall just a happy person that loves Genshin Impact. And then had this to say, I did on my stream and on my reaction to the trailer. I'm disappointed that there aren't darker skin tone characters mm. in that land and the representation is just so bad, especially since Hoyo is pulling from real world regions and cultures. Mm. I genuinely had hope for them and I hope they make changes in time of release. Okay. And Doro speaking out pretty much started a chain reaction of other- And because remember, this is a guy, it's not a random person, it's a guy who's in very pro Hoyoverse. And now he's making a tweet that goes against that. So obviously there's gonna be a lot more push for this now. Content creators also starting to speak out about it. Yeah. You had Blap, one of the biggest Genshin Impact content creators around the time it released, able to do a video just playing the story and getting over a million views, mm -hmm. said, the insane part is like, what else is there to say about- that's more insane. The fact that you can just fucking stream Genshin Impact, play a fucking story quest, which is the most boring bullshit dialogue there ever was, and get millions of views for it. Like, bro, people are literally watching paint dry. That is fucking insane. But Genshin's colorism that hasn't already been said two years ago. People were talking about the same issues that were seen in Sumeru's cast and were instead told to wait for Natlan. Now that we're here, what do you wait for? Uh, the next region that's gonna be based on a different continent that has darker skin tone people? I don't fucking know. Tuanto, the Genshin Impact content creator with the most subscribers on YouTube, retweeted two tweets that were echoing the same sentiment as the voice actors and content creators that had spoken up. Okay. While this was happening, many people were taking the character designs that were already shown and making them black. I'm not gonna lie. There's nothing wrong with the skin tone, but this art is fucking dog shit. Why did you ruin Zilonen like that? This looks like trash and it has nothing to do with skin tone. Like this one, for example, and many others. And they were getting many views and a lot of traction on Twitter with many people thinking, man, this should have been the actual design of these characters. But Tectone came in with a bit of a different <laughs> opinion. <laughs> Here comes the baldy. Here comes the Mr. Gotcha himself. What he said. Genshin Impact will not change. If you're mad, you should quit. I mean, he's not wrong. I don't care if you think he's an asshole. I'm saying he's not wrong. If you're actually mad about this shit, you want chain? Stop playing the fucking game and hurt Hoyoverse where it counts. The fucking wallet. The only thing they track care about is money spent and concurrent player base. True. This has already happened before and will happen again. We've seen this. The fucking Nahida banner sales, right? Side note, I do think it's fair to be upset, but the company doesn't care. I think that this is an extremely based tweet. What he said is the brutal absolute truth and even gives a little side note saying, listen, it does fucking suck, right? It does. But at the end of the day, your feelings and sadness and these petitions are not going to change anything until you stop playing the fucking game. And saying Genshin Impact will not change. If you're mad, you should quit. 
the only thing they track slash care about is money spent and concurrent player base. This has already happened before and will happen again. Side note, I do think it's fair to be upset, but the company doesn't care. Yep. And this is where it gets tricky because it was becoming clear this was a topic with many different opinions. Genshin Impact had made this tweet officially revealing Mualani in her drip marketing. And All here's right. two kinds of quote tweets that I want to show you to really make you understand. <laughs> We're about to get the duality of man. Two quote retweets. One of them is going to say, oh, wood, wood, my wife, who I can't wait. And the other side is, I cannot believe that Hoyoverse has pretty much committed genocide against my own culture. How opinions can differ. Someone quote tweeted this drip marketing and said, holy f Hoyoverse, you bump f How did she get more white? To be fair, this is true. On the left side is more white than the right. This is true accusing them of whitening her up in the drip marketing. I mean, it's- And then you have this you not tweet see right it? here saying, Genshin fans be like, they whitewashed Obama. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. The difference here is that the Obama pictures, look, listen, skin tone can change based on lighting, right? Let's look at my lighting right now, right? The skin tone can absolutely change with higher, like it, more lighting, right? It, it definitely can. It's all about the lighting. So, Obama example, it's the fucking lighting. However, this is not lighting. This is a 2D fucking picture, okay? The lighting does not apply here, okay? Obama in two different scenarios that have different light sources. This one also getting a lot of traction. Mm -hmm. But what really made this boycott catastrophic in the sense that it didn't work, it won't work, and it will never work is this what? right here i could just sum it up with this tweet look go free to play queens please remember not to fun whole universe anymore stupid children that has no understanding of how businesses work how corporations work how people make money not even understanding that they are the fucking plankton in this ocean of an ecosystem where the more planktons and this bottom feeder fucking fish exist these little spenders and people who don't pay you're all feeding into this ecosystem called genshin impact the whales have no fucking reasons to whale if they have no one to flex upon there's a whole culture and lifestyle of group chats of gotcha discussion and stuff you know subreddits where people want to share their polls you're going to see over time after time people posting their banner polls it's like free to play by the way <laughs> but there's also the whales that feels this um feeling of superiority because they were able to get something that people weren't and they flex upon that it's even more prevalent on pvp games i know genshin is not pvp it's pve but regardless you are still actively helping Genshin Impact's, you know, concurrent player base count. It's helping them get more numbers and thinking that you're doing anything by being free to play is the dumbest shit fucking possible. Being a free to play and being proud in a game is the most cuck thing possible. If you actually do the fucking math and if you went and worked a shitty fucking minimum wage job compared to the amount of time, let's say you put into fucking eight hours of playing Genshin Impact, going around fucking collecting mints, picking mints, and trying to get a little bit of primos, right? Doing all the exploration bullshit for eight hours compared to you working a fucking eight hour shift at mcdonald's and you come home and you use that money swipe and get the primos you're gonna have more value by working at mcdonald's compared to free to play because time is money and genshin impact does not respect your time and people have the audacity to be proud that they're free to play when they're just wasting their fucking time and acting as if they're special this is someone participating in the boycott saying, please remember not to fund Hoyverse anymore. Go free to play Queens. Because the sentiment... <laughs> I don't know why this is so funny. <laughs> Draco, the local twink, 18 plus, <laughs> open for roleplay by <laughs> Lizard Femboy? Wait, wait a minute. Lizard Fem... That's a scaly. I can't call him a furry. This is a scaly. And anyways... Anymore, go free to play Queens. Because the sentiment echoed on the boycott communities in Twitter yeah. were saying, hey, listen, you can keep playing the game. Just don't fund them. Don't spend money anymore. Yeah, and still help them continues to advertise their products by talking about the game and add, you know, the statistics as the concurrent player base. It's so fucking stupid what these kids are doing. And then you see this reply. But here's the thing. They're stupid kids. It makes a lot of sense. Why would you think that a dumb 14, 15 year old kid that doesn't have any understanding of how the world works to have a, 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 like a realistic idea of what to fucking do? Of course this is the only outcome. Saying, or you could just stop playing the game. 
because just you playing it pads their numbers and makes investors yes! happy, meaning they still get- The lizard twink is correct! The scaly femboy is right! Oh my god, based! Money, going free to play won't stop anything. True! To which this person replies, it is very easy to speak, but nearly impossible to do. I still remember thinking that I wanted to delete Honkai Star Rail, but I can't. Why? Because I invested 1,000 top dollars in this game. How Gambler's fallacy. How can I delete this game now? I have spent so much on it. That's right. Keep fucking digging. Keep fucking digging. Swiping more of your cards. Spend more money. Oh, I'm so invested into this game. Koyverse has my balls in a fucking gridlock. I can't stop playing because if I stop playing, all the money that I spent just goes away and I realize what a terrible life decision I made. It's an extremely predatory ecosystem for sure. But that is the nature of gotcha. And you should have known about this when you fucking signed up for it. People play gotcha for the thrill of the gamba. But there's also a lot of people, unfortunate people, that get too deep into the hole like this. Where they genuinely say shit like, oh, I can't stop fucking playing. You can. Just stop it right now. Because the longer you play, because of this logic, this 1,000 top dollars is going to be 2,000 by next year, dumbass. And you could have stopped right now and saved that 1,000. But no, you're weak, pathetic, gotcha-addicted losers. How can I delete this game now? I have spent so much on it. <laughs> This right here is literally, like, I'm not even kidding. This is yep. why the boycott didn't work and will never- Yes, because their own fucking people can't have the balls to commit to something. Y'all remember the Reddit boycott? You guys remember that? I'm not sure how many people understood, uh, uh, know what I'm talking about, but, but a couple of months ago, maybe it was a couple of years ago, I can't remember now, Reddit was going through a change where they were fixing um, their uh, laws regarding uh, their open a API, I think. Basically, it was hurting the consumers. And there was a whole boycott saying, let's not use Reddit anymore. If we all band together, if all the monkeys band together, unite, and let's all make our subreddit private and hurt them more accounts. It happened for like a couple days, and then people gave in, and then everyone forgot about it, and everything's back the way it is. Because at the end of the day, humanity, people are fucking weak little monkeys. We cannot unite or band together. Whenever you have a strike, people are saying, don't cross that line. We need to unite. The people on the other side are just going to fucking throw a $20 fucking bill across the line. And for sure, one of these people that's supposed to band together will cross the picket line and disrupt the entire system. The example I'm giving right now is exactly what's happening with the people that play gacha games. They're addicted. They cannot quit. That's why Holyverse doesn't give a shit about any of these petitions. Never work because the people boycotting it cannot stop playing the game. <laughs> They're addicted. They can't do it. And here's the harsh reality. Mm. If Hoyverse had to pick between someone who shows up in their game once a month, spends $100 mm -hmm. and then leaves versus someone who plays the game every Again, the cucked free-to-play player the average age around 14 to 16, playing this bullshit game without any content for hours, and then says, oh, you know, we got to play Genshin, but they can't stop playing. And then the other side, you have the fucking working class who's too busy to play games, but they have disposable income. So they come around and drop a hundred bucks to pull their waifu and leaves and just kind of has fun with the waifus. It's, it's interesting, the dichotomy of players. Of course, they're going to cater towards player one. Of course they will. And player two, you have nothing of value. Even if you play every day, you didn't spend anything. Why would they care about you? You're going to continue playing and continue to free advertisement on Twitter. But the people that does this shit, they don't care. They're going to spend when the waifu drops and leave and Genshin's going to profit. It's fucked up. But it's even more messed up that the kids don't understand how this shit works and they get preyed upon it. Every single day for hours on end and doesn't spend any dollar. Guess who they'll pick if they can keep only one? They'll pick the person who doesn't spend money, but plays the game every single day. The point Mujin's making right now is different from the point I was making, okay? The point I'm making is they care more about the bottom line than these losers that's going to continue to play. For hours on end. Why? First off, it passes their numbers and makes the active concurrent player base seem higher. But yes. also, this person's addicted, dude. They, they have don't have to do anything. They literally don't have to do anything and they'll just continue to fucking play the game. A higher chance of yep. becoming an evangelist, something very valuable to a company that money can't really buy. 
which means they'll talk to their friends about it. They'll probably buy merch. Yep. They'll go to conventions. And in the other opposite light too, the people that hate this shit, right? This is very passionate about Genshin, but it also could be the people that's saying, you know, petition this, petition that, but keep playing, but don't spend. That's the exact same level of marketing and advertising. More drama like this is going to highlight more eyes into Genshin Impact and people are going to check the game out because of the drama and more people will play. They'll participate on social media, etc., etc. And let's be real here. Many people boycotting are also in their teenage years. Okay? Yes. It's not like they spent a lot of money to begin with. I doubt the real whales who are actually spending thousands of dollars every month. Yes, thousands actually care about. Actual whales probably do drop like 2000 per month of disposable income. This. And this is where this whole boycott is flawed. Additionally, Legal Mindset made this tweet saying something tells me the Hoyverse boycott will be ineffective. And yes. And this is another thing. The biggest purchasing power or rather the biggest fan base where Hoyoverse makes the most amount of money is from Asia regions, right? And Asia has a different culture of spending while North America doesn't. So that's why it doesn't really matter. Look at this, Japan, South Korea, Philippines, Russia, Taiwan. I know Russia is not, you know, considered like, um, well, actually it's pretty near anyways. It's not like the North America that we're talking about, right? It has no fucking matter. Where is the United States? United States, I see Canada down here. Where the fuck is USA? Do I not even see USA over here? Huh. And this is a chart that shows the Genshin Impact Where player distribution by region. It says, here's a player distribution data by region in the past five years. I can't believe that Canada is more than United States. I would have expected the United States to be here, but on like a lower bracket compared to the Asian regions. There's being a hundred has the most players. And as you can see here, the top five countries in which there's the most players that play Genshin Impact are yeah. Japan, South Korea, Philippines, Russia, and Taiwan. Yeah. The United States isn't even he. I don't really know how exactly reliable this is true, but even if this is not reliable, it is without a doubt that China is the biggest fucking audience, right? And people care more about Chinese whales and the spending culture in Asia compared to what North American kids has to say. Here to begin with, and most of the European countries aren't either. In fact, I can't even find South America except for Chile and Costa Rica. The top 10 countries on this list, who also happen to be some of its biggest spenders, associate white skin with cleanliness, beauty. Yeah, and this is an unfortunate reality. This is what's called colorism. So if you thought regular racism was bad, let me explain to you what colorism is. Even in the black community, you see a lot of people get flack for being too light skin or too dark skin. Even in these specific races where you would think people get along, people associate lighter skin as being more elite, being more educated. Because if you were dark skin back in the day, that meant you were out in the farmlands working labor jobs. You're not educated, you're ignorant, therefore you're a lower class person. Somehow the beauty standards also accepted that. And now there's obviously a lot of cosmetic, um, what's the word? Uh, a lot of beauty products that is, you know, skin whitening, right? You see a lot of these K-pop idols. People, if you look at their skin tone of their face compared to the rest of their body, you can clearly tell that it's all just fucking makeup, right? And the really sad thing about this is how this beauty standards makes a lot of other Asian kids who have darker skin tone obsess about chasing the, you know, light skin and trying to like bleach their skin and do some things that just negatively impacts them. It causes like mental illness and like such, it, it, it's too much of a beauty standard and like the, the world starts to kind of accept that and, and it's really fucked up. This is what colorism is. The lighter skin tone, the paler you are, the more you're going to be accepted by people. And it's at the end of the day, just human psychology. I'm sure there's a study done on why people think like that. Beauty, purity. And they also unfortunately don't really have any preference towards darker skin. I don't think it's surprising for me to say that both Japan and South Korea, the biggest player bases in this game by far, would probably never spend money on a dark. Yes, and a lot of people have the talking point of, well, no, they're not spending on darker skin tone white foods because Deus kit simply sucked, and that's why her banner failed. That could be true, but do you expect Hoyaverse to like still gamble on that? Because they know that this is a fact, and they've seen that the biggest regions of their player base that actually spends the money prefers the lighter skin tone characters. So why would a corporation go out of their way to try to um, basically play to their weaknesses for the sake of their, what, representation that they don't actually give a fuck about? Her skin color character. Because don't get it twisted. At the end of the day, this is about money. Yes. Something that Hoyaverse is- Yes, no data-driven decisions, right? Look at this. Right over here, the region is China. China, Japan, 
um, and I think this is like global or something. The market of numbers, the top charts in every fucking gacha revenue monthly reports, bro. It's China. Why the fuck would people listen to dumbass kids in North America telling people that, hey, you should write up this petition and call your fucking local politicians to call Mr. Mihoyo directly? Like, that's not gonna work. No stranger to at all. Genshin Impact in China alone has made $38 million in Jesus June of 2024. Christ. And this is during a dead period where there's not a lot. That's the craziest shit. It's during a dead period, bro. Like, even HSR right now, June, what was the June banner? Was that fucking just Jade? And, like, look at it. Both HSR and, like, um, uh, Genshin are during the low time, low like, uh, it's, it's, the hype is low, and it's still number one and two. And what's number three? It's HSR and Genshin, but global. Do you see how ridiculous Genshin, like, this whole universe products are? They're so fucking dominant that the only things, only games that can compete with the Chinese market is their own fucking game in a global market. Isn't that insane? And then you have Naruto, what the fuck is Naruto Mobile? <laughs> Love and Deeps, this looks like a fucking Yaoi game. This looks like a fucking BL game right over here. Wuthering Waves is there, though. That's cool to see that Wuthering Waves global market is actually more than the Chinese market. That is significant. A lot of new content. Globally, Genshin Impact made $29 million. And Crazy I assure shit. you, when the stats come out for July, it'll show a great number. And this is also a reason why video gaming studios, AAA studios, are deciding to implement microtransactions and like, you know, battle passes into the games after you spend like a flat amount of like how much dollars for a AAA game. Because like, Im imagine this, the amount of resources it takes to create these mobile games is much less than an actual AAA game, in my opinion. It it's less staff, much less resources, but it's way more profitable. The profit margins on mobile games compared to actual games that you fucking make without gotcha instilled in it, it's different. That's why so many North American studios are trying to, you know, copy gotcha. And it's, it's, it's actually genius, gotcha game, just in a nutshell, from a business perspective. Not only is there this, like, gambling addiction part of it, it's also very, like, low effort to, you know, make product. I'm not saying Genshin, Hoiver's products are low effort, but a lot of other gotcha games, if you compare the amount of resources to put in to create the game versus, like, a AAA game, and the amount of profit margins that they can get on it, it's no-brainer why people are starting to try to go towards that microtransaction model through mobile games. Two. But that's weird, because some people were sharing this Imgur album saying this is the Chinese reaction to Natlan characters. Guys, there are allies here. With comments such as, agreed, it is appropriate to have black characters in settings and styles of Africa and Latin America. I'm gonna assume that this is an alt account? I don't know. It's a Chinese reaction, I... really? I would expect there's even more people against this. Is this a secret agent? America, with bigger comments supporting it. One second, technical issue? Technical issue. Audio issues. Three, two, one. Are we back? Come on, motherfucker, make that noise. I think we're back. Yeah, we're back. Settings and styles of Africa and Latin America, with bigger comments supporting it too. But here's the thing this is part of a forum. I don't even know what the forum is, and these are only a few hand picked comments. The reality is, most of the Chinese community is on Billy Billy. Let's see what they have to say there. Mm. <clears throat> we <laughs> We're about to get a series of the most based fucking messages from Billy Billy. Oh, we going in raw. They don't have political correctness. They can fuck off. I don't like someone Jesus! who looks black. Hiller she oh my <laughs> Hill and Charles are black and there were swarms of them. Why aren't they satisfied? <gasps> and look at the amount of people liking it too. Like, I'm not saying that this is appropriate, but you can clearly see the difference in culture of the different fan bases. Holy fuck. Characters are black and there are swarms of them. Why aren't they satisfied? Characters look okay. What's the problem? Why do they need to have dark skin? Black skin are so to look at, only slight tan are okay. Now we're just straight up racist. I mean, it was already racist before this too, right? These are, I think we're getting cherry picked both sides right now. I think the, these are, these, it can't be the most popular comments, right? I mean, in any like forums, there's going to be edgy people that says controversial shit. Even on Reddit, it, 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 this can't be the mainstream ideology of Chinese audience, right? There's no way, right? And even if I was, they wouldn't just say it like this, right?
Now, of course, this doesn't represent the majority of Chinese people on this planet. Okay. But the reality is, Hoyaverse would much rather piss off the global player who accesses Twitter and Reddit, two websites yep. they can't access yep. at home, rather than pissing off people like this. Exactly. Just think about it from a numerous perspective. You've seen the gacha revenue charts. The biggest market is from China. Asian culture also prefers, you know, the lighter skin. Why would you then shoot yourself in the foot and piss off the audience that's bringing you money from a business perspective. Don't get me wrong, 100,000 signatures is pretty significant. And this would have maybe gotten a certain reaction from a Western developer. But you're dealing with a Chinese corporation here. True. And a Chinese corporation will only care about either money yeah. or pissing off the government. That is it. There's nothing... Low-key kind of based. <laughs> they only care about money. Just getting the bag and pissing off the CCP kind of based. Nothing else. Zero. And this was proven in one of the worst ways, as this was happening, by the way, the salt in the wound to everyone who signed this petition and complained on Twitter happened as they were complaining. Uh -oh. On July 18th, not even a few days after- Oh, right! I heard about this! Recently, I haven't played Genshin compared to other ways, but like, I heard that the Nubalit nerf and shit, and like the Chinese, you know, audience got so fucking mad, everything was reversed overnight. The whole boycott movement was beginning to really explode. Genshin Impact released a patch for Nivillette, a character famously known yes. to have a very overpowered ability which lets him three- So, do you see him right now just spinning around? Basically, he is the most overpowered character that's ever released. You only need him, and he shoots this beam, and what you want to do is just go like this with the mouse, so that he continues to spin around and shoots the fucking hyper beam, the hydro pump at every monster, and they all fucking die. <laughs> it's, it's actually so fucking stupid. 360 and pretty much eliminate anyone in his radius. Yeah. After eight months of being out, they release a patch that quote unquote fixes it and uh. stops him from being able to do this rapidly. The Chinese fan base. Oh, we were mad. Lost. Not we, the Chinese fan base were very mad and I hear the change just happened immediately, right? People started getting they, like, like basically what the North American kids are doing, the Chinese guys did. And then Mihoyo just immediately reversed it because that's where the money actually comes from. They only care if it hurts their bottom line. It's mind over this and threatened to yep. sue Genshin Impact Damn. under the law of sue? Chinese consumer rights. And I kid you not, I kid you okay. not, in under- That's crazy, they had a whole ass fucking essay just written out, bro, that's insane. For 24 hours, not only did they reverse the patch, but they crazy sent- Crazy shit. One of the most generous- What?! 1,600, that's a whole ass temple, right?! Dude, for comparison's sake? During the anniversaries, remember how people got mad? Because these motherfuckers gave you like like a couple of pulls, not a full temple, just a couple and some fucking mint. Rewards in the game's history, 1,600 Prima Gems to <laughs> apologize. While people were still complaining about the skin colors, Hoyverse had pretty much said, we couldn't care less mm -hmm. unless our Chinese business yep. was in danger. Yep. As I told you, either money or the government. That is the only thing that can move a Chinese corporation. And Chinese players knew that very well. Look, people have voiced their opinions. It's their opinion, you know, it's their viewpoint. And of course, it's valid. I think one of the main issues I've seen people voice is the fact that their history is quote unquote being replaced. Because now if I type Olorun, which is the Yoruba deity, I start to see the Genshin Impact character. Well, is history actually getting erased? How many people from a region where Olarun is their god would even know about Olarun. How many people would actually search this and think that, oh no, it's a femboy character? I, I don't know, this is kind of exaggerating. Is your culture and history being erased because of a fucking gacha character that has to do with like a local deity that the people of those, you know, that culture probably doesn't even fucking know? That, this is a huge assumption I'm making right now, but like, I don't know. Maybe different cultures do care about those deities more. But I, if, I, I feel like most kids don't even fucking know and they were, they'd be like, what are you talking about? Right? Who doesn't look anything like him. And the people complaining are making this out to be a life or death situation. Like, oh my god, my culture is being replaced. It's being erased. I cannot support the game anymore. But the thing is, you can't make this out to be a life or death situation if you're addicted to the game and can't stop mm -hmm. playing it. You have 
Like, you clearly care more about playing the game and helping Hoyoverse make more money than the social cause you're fucking touting on Twitter. You don't actually care. Let's get serious. If you cared, you'd quit the game. Have to commit because the fact that people are still playing the game while signing the petition. Fun fact, I don't even care about this and I've quit the game. That's how based I am, bro. I don't even give a fuck. Light skin waifus, dark skin waifus, whatever, bro. I don't want to play Genshin because the game is fucking trash right now. I'll come back for the fucking Natlan release of the waifus, but like, I'll just quit. And just makes everyone look like absolute clowns, and that's the reality. A real boycott is like what happened with Blizzard back in 2019 when they disqualified a player for voicing support for Hong Kong protesters back in huh? 2019. Oh, People right, that. People in retaliation started deleting their Blizzard accounts. Yes, deleting them, not just not playing on them, deleting them in such high numbers that Blizzard did something dirty. They started asking people for their ID Damn. to delete your account. They were getting scared. This emboldened the employees to start doing on-site protests on the company grounds. Now, unfortunately, this was stopped short when the Hong Kong protests got stopped short because of the pandemic. Those are but crazy as you can times. See, this is a real example of a boycott. Not whatever's going on with Genshin right now. I don't think anything will change. And until something like this happens, nothing will Ever change. Yep. So my advice to you is if you truly find this to be a life or death situation for you and your culture, then make honestly, the change. Put the game. It's time to move on and go to a game that better presents your values because Genshin Impact or anything Won't. under Hoivers will not do so. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty much the controversy that's been going on the last few weeks. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to see you. That was a great video from Mujin. And please, guys, check out the video. Go to his channel, sub to his channel, PIO, and go like his videos. There's a link. But as a final like takeaway from this is, it's just a bunch of dumbass North American kids that have no understanding how life works. And yes, there is some partial truth, absolutely, right? Of how culture and history may be erased and the representation of those different regions and cultures. Imagine you're part of that and you're actually looking forward to having characters that can represent your identity and they don't do that. For sure, I would get upset too. But if you're actually that upset, if you truly wanna make a change, you need to fucking stop playing the game. But I know for a fact that weak-willed, gotcha-addicted kids can't have the presence of mind to make that decision. So at the end of the day, people are going to laugh at these kids, even if their cause may be correct because of how pathetic and weak will there is. There's probably more gotcha content, drama content around this video. So I'll look forward to you guys on those next videos.